Greetings, everyone. This is Fred Calder. Welcome to Church at Home. Church at Home is sponsored by the Christian Biblical Church of God, and we are dedicated to restoring original Christianity for today. We've been covering how that Satan has come out of his closet. So this is number five, Satan out of the closet. What are you going to do? Because we have seen that we are at the point that the severe correction of God is coming. We're experiencing it right now, a foretaste of it. But it's going to come even worse. And it's going to be of a magnitude that we have never imagined is going to happen. So you better be prepared, and you better know where God is, and you better be on his side. Let me read this. Ezekiel 7. Now, the book of Ezekiel is really a very tough book because it's a book that is recorded the power and vengeance of God against those who go the way of Satan. Now, we've seen that in the segments leading up to this. Now, I want you to read these verses here. I want you to see what's coming. Ezekiel 7, verse 23, make a chain for the land is full of bloody crimes. Sound like our nightly news? Sound like your city? Sound like New York, Baltimore, Chicago, St. Louis, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Portland, Seattle, parts of Minnesota? Huh. What part of the country do you live in? Are there bloody crimes? The city is full of violence. Now, isn't that true? See, now that happened to Jerusalem twice. And the unfortunate thing about that is this. What had happened? The Jews never repented. So God had to send them into captivity. And the Jews rarely, if ever, admit that this happened twice because of their sins. First, the Babylonian invasion, and God said he raised up Nebuchadnezzar to do it. And then there was the Roman invasion twice, 66 to 70 AD and 130 to 135 AD. And God leveled. Jerusalem, that which is standing where the Mosque of Omar is today, was not Jewish property. That was Roman property. Now, notice what God is going to do. I will bring the worst of the heathen. Huh, the worst. I want you to think about that for a minute. And they shall possess their houses. I will also make the pomp of the strong to cease, and their holy places shall be defiled. Terror comes. Now, where we're headed? How many have come across the border? Well, when it's all done, it's going to be like 12 or 15 million. What's going to happen when they're all unemployed? What's going to happen when the economy fails? What's going to happen when there's no money to take care of them or to take care of you? What's going to happen when the food is short? What's going to happen when it's hard to get water? What's going to happen when you can't even protect your own home? Because it's coming. God guarantees it. Terror comes and they shall seek peace, but there shall be none. Disaster 
shall come upon disaster, and rumor shall be upon rumor. Now what we have today? Every day we're surprised by a disaster. And yet the enemy, and there are a lot of people who think China is going to be the ultimate enemy to conquer us without firing a shot. Now, you need to think about that. They shall seek a vision from the prophet, but the law shall perish from the priest and wisdom from the elders. How does that sound? That's truth from the Word of God. You want to know where we're headed? You want to understand what these things are? There it is, right there. This is a prophecy of God for any time that a nation does what this nation has done. Now, let's read verse 27. The king shall mourn, and the prince shall be clothed with despair, the hands of the people of the land shall tremble, and I will do to them according to their way, and according to their uncleanness I will judge them, and they shall know that I am the Lord. And God always uses other people to do it. You need to understand that people that will be led by Satan, the devil, and the demons to bring justice and judgment because of the arrogance and hatefulness of the people of the land. Let's see where this starts out. Notice verse 1. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, And you also, son of man, thus says the Lord God to the land of Israel, and you need our book, America and Britain their biblical origin and their prophetic destiny. And I'm reading to you part of their prophetic destiny for leaving God back then and for leaving God today. It says here, an end. The end has come upon the four corners of the land. Now the end has come upon you and I will send my anger upon you and will judge you according to your ways and will lay upon you all your abominations. My eyes shall not spare you, neither will I have pity, but I will repay your ways upon you, and your abominations shall be in your midst, and you shall know that I am the Lord. No one is going to defy God. And all of the establishment preachers which tell you false things about goodness and you just come and coddle up to this sweet little prayer and you're on your way to heaven is the biggest lie that there ever was in Protestant theology. Every one of the preachers. Thus says the Lord God, an evil, behold, an unheard of evil has come. The end has come. The end has come. It awakens against you. Behold, it comes. And when it comes to that, notice what he says it's going to be. So if you think it's bad now, you just wait. The encirclement of doom has come unto you, O dwellers of the land. The time has come. The day of tumult is near, and not a joyful shouting upon the mountains. And I will, God says, do you believe the word of God? Do you believe that God is the God of truth? Do you think he is saying these things just to have space taken up in the Bible? Or does not every word of God, is it not living truth, and is it not going to be fulfilled? And is it not going to come to pass? What is this nation going to do? What are you going to do? You can't sit around and talk about, well, Fred Coulter is just angry and mad at everything. No, I'm telling you the truth of God that's coming before it comes so that maybe you can get right with God 
so that maybe it won't come upon you as severe as it's going to come upon this nation. God says, I will pour out my fury upon you and my anger upon you. I will judge you according to your ways and will repay you for all your abominations. That's the future of America. Britain first, then America. Now notice verse 9, if you don't think God doesn't mean what he says. My eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity. I will repay you according to your ways and your abominations that are in your midst, and you shall know that I am the Lord. Let's read on, because these words are important for you to know and understand. So you need to listen. God wants you to repent. God wants you to change. And if not, this is what is coming. Verse 10, Behold the day. Behold, it has come. The encirclement of doom has gone out. The rod has blossomed. Arrogance has budded. Violence has risen up into a rod of wickedness. None of them shall remain, nor their multitude, nor any of their riches, nor shall there be any wailing for them. The time has come. The day has arrived. Let not the buyer rejoice, nor the seller mourn, for the wrath is upon the multitude. And you do some more reading in the book of Ezekiel, and you will see how terrible it is going to be. Now let's come to Isaiah 55, because these things are prophecies yet to come. But you must be forewarned. That's why I'm bringing it to you. Will you forsake your stubbornness? Will you forsake your lies? Will you forsake your sins? Will you set your mind to love and obey God? What is it that you will do? Verse 6, seek the Lord while he may be found. Because when all hell breaks loose, and it's going to break loose, they won't find God. Call upon him while he is near. That's what you need to do in complete repentance to God for your sins, for your transgressions, for your breaking of his commandments. Get our book. Lord, what should I do? Get our book, Why Christianity is Failing. Get our book on the truth of God concerning baptism. Now, we've done a lot of segments on it, but how many people would really listen? How many people were knocking on the door to be baptized and repenting? Huh? Very few. What about you? Notice this, verse 7. Let the wicked forsake his way. You turn from your sins. You can't come to God and say, forgive me, and continue living like you have been living. You must change and begin obeying the laws of God through the grace of God, because the grace of God and the laws of God go hand in hand, like the right hand and the left hand, or the hand and the glove. Forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. What are your thoughts? What do you think of? What is important to you? What occupies your attention? You have to evaluate that because you alone know that. And let him return to the Lord, and you return his way. Now, let's come to Joel, the second chapter. We'll come back here to Isaiah 55 in just a minute. Let's come to Joel, the second chapter, and let's see 
how God wants the repentance. He doesn't want you just to say, oh, Lord, I'm sorry. He wants you to understand the magnitude of your sins and your abominations and your wrong ways. Verse 12, therefore, even now, take that in present tense to you, God speaking to you personally, because these are the words of God for every man, woman, and child on the earth that have ever been, that ever will be. Even now, says the Lord, turn to me. How? With all your heart. No reservation. No holding back. And with fasting. And with weeping. And with mourning. And rend your heart. Recognize how evil and sinful it is. Rend your heart and not your garments. Don't let it be superficial. The garments are out here. Your heart is here and here. And return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful and slow to anger and of great kindness and repents of the evil. That's what he wants. He will turn his hand of correction away from you. But this world and society and this nation are heading into the buzzsaw of the correction of God. Now back to Isaiah 55. So let's repeat verse number 7, because this is important, and you have to understand this. If you've been living a life contrary to the commandments of God, you are what the Bible calls wicked. Kid. Now, you might be a nice person, you think. You might be doing nice things, you think. But remember, the tree of Satan, the devil, the knowledge of good and evil, there is good on that tree, but that's not the goodness of God. That is the fake goodness of Satan, the devil. So you need to think about it. You need to also get the Bible, the Holy Bible, in its original order. And you use it every single day. We also have it online at afaithfulversion.org, where we have the whole Bible, the text, and also the audio reading of it, so that you can understand the truth and the magnitude of what God is saying. Notice this, verse 7. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy unto him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Now I want you to know this. His thoughts are not like yours. So you've got to come to the Word of God to get his thoughts. And all his thoughts have been printed, recorded, so that it goes to every human being as if God himself is personally talking to each and every one of you. Apart from any faith in Christ Jesus, it is clear that the Bible is the most read and most influential book in the world. The best-selling book of all time is the Christian Bible. Since 1522, when it was first published for the Leipzig Book Fair, there has never been a year that the Bible was not the number one best-selling book of that year. The Bible has been translated into more languages than any other book, 3,384 by September 2022. No other book has been more burned, more banned, more cherished and more smuggled than the Bible. No other book has as many scientists, academics, archaeologists, philosophers and people in general arguing at any one point in time for and against the validity of its contents. 
No other document of ancient literature compares to the scriptures. We have over 5,300 manuscripts from within 50 to 200 years of when they were written. Like no other book where you read and finish, you will read and read again and still be captivated by freshness and wonder in the story that continues to unfold to this day. So he says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor my ways your ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. His word is going to go out. And God wants there to be repentance. He doesn't want to have to bring all of this and bring the encirclement of doom. No. But who's going to repent? Who's going to turn to God? Huh? Let's see. Let's come to Jeremiah 18. This tells you and answers the question where we saw that God looks down on the sons of men to see if there were any who were seeking after God. So God wants to know, are you going to seek him? in truth, and in confession, and with a motivation to love God and keep his commandments? Let's see. Jeremiah 18, verse 7. If at any time, not limited, Old Testament, not limited to the past, but any time, past, present, and future, if at any time I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom, to pluck it up, to pull it down, to destroy it. That's where we are with America and Britain today. It's not the enemies we are facing that we think are the enemies that are causing it. It's the hand of God raising up the enemies against us because of our sins. Now notice what he says because God is merciful and kind and gracious and doesn't want anyone to suffer or perish. But if you go against God, it's going to come. He says this, If that nation against whom I have spoken will turn from their evil, I will repent of the evil that I thought to do to them. Now, guess what? In the Bible it records there was only one nation ever to do that. The Ninevites, when Jonah came and preached to them to repentance, and the whole nation from the king on down to the very least of them fasted and repented, and God lifted his hand of punishment against them, and the punishment didn't come for another 120 years. But Israel never repented. Judah never repented. No, 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 no. We know more than God. He says that he will turn his hand back. Now, verse 9. And if any time I speak concerning a nation, concerning a kingdom, to build it, to plant it. Now, that's also a person, a family, a community, a city, a state, a province, a nation. If it does evil in my sight, that it not obey my voice. Now, why don't you take that phrase, obey my voice? That is the simplest definition of what God wants you to do concerning his word, because he has made it printed so you know. You don't have to wonder, well, what is the will of God? right here, okay? So what are you going to do? Are you going to repent and come to God? Or if you are someone who is right with God, are you going to turn back and go against God? Now notice what he says. If it does evil in my sight that it not obey my voice, then I will repent of the good which I said I would do to them. Here is the conclusion 
of Satan out of his closet because God will let Satan do it. Verse 11, Now therefore speak to the men of Judah and the people of Jerusalem, thus says the Lord. Behold, I'm forming evil against you and devising a plan against you. Return now each one from his evil way and make your ways and your doings good. Now that's what God wants. That is the only answer to all the problems and difficulties we see every day transpiring in America, in Britain, and other nations of the world. Disaster and catastrophe all because of going against God. So once again, I ask the question, what will you do? So thank you for inviting me into your home. So until next time, this is Fred Calder saying, so long, everyone.